Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Through the Ages. Now, you may be wondering, where are we? Seth, last time we worked on the elevator, and that's kind of where you left us. Well, we are in a brand new area in our hardcore world. This area is tied directly to my Twitch channel. This is Viewer Village. Now, I want to show this off first today before we do some other stuff in the world because this is a cool little project I have going. So what this is, is Viewer Village. This is a village that you, the viewer, if you come over to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash SethMOfficial, can get your own plot for channel points and upgrade it and have your own place in this hardcore world. So if you come over here, this is how it works. So... We have these little small plots, they're 8x8, and once you buy a plot with channel points, and you get those from watching me on Twitch live, you get a little tiny house, a little tiny dirt house. Sometimes you'll get the green top, sometimes you won't. It just really depends on how long I'm in the area, and here we have all these. Then there is size upgrades and material type upgrades. These are the size upgrades here, so... We have, um, and, and would, this is, this is if you just get the first size upgrade, this is what you get. You get this little nice little two-story dirt house. And it is very, very cool. Little room up here. And then if you get the size and the <clears throat> material type, you get one of these. And this is, this is a double level and this is a sub on my channel so they got a special color of wood for their house this is one of my mods so they have a little uh, diamond sword above their house and they bought all three stories and the first level of material types so they have a basement and an upstairs so this is what viewer village is and then we have some goals over here for more like public works projects so i will go through them with you right now so 200 YouTube subscribers, that's right here on YouTube, we're going to upgrade the roads to coarse dirt and gravel. Then if we get 200 followers on Twitch, we're very close to, we'll put a little fountain in. Uh, five average viewers on Twitch, we get street lights. 10 people chatting at once on Twitch, we get benches. 100 viewers on Twitch, you get the flower beds. 20 viewers on a non-short YouTube video, that would be one like this. We'll put a pond in the park. Five Twitch subs will get a slide at the park. 20 members on the Discord will put the stables. And please go to the Discord right now. Link is in, des in the description. And join that to stay updated on all the YouTube videos and all my streaming. And then finally, 200 followers on TikTok will put in a graveyard, which you don't have really marked out yet. But, so, there is Discord integration with this village. So, there will be weekly and monthly challenges on our Discord channel for furniture items, pets, special little things, special signs, maybe dedications of the park and stuff. There will be weekly and monthly challenges. So go over there on the Discord and be a part of that because they are pretty cool. I think the monthly challenges month is to see who can post the most comments on my YouTube channel. This, like this video right now, let's see who maybe can put the most comments in because then you could win a house upgrade or a pet upgrade. But yeah, this is what we've been working on recently in our streams. This is going to be more of a little just update video because we were working a lot on streams before we do some actual content with you guys in the next episode. Like some, like some building. This will just be some updates. So we'll be right back when we get back to our base. Here we are in front of the hollow mountain and this is the brand new hollow mountain visitor center because this is a national park i thought it'd be nice to give it a little visitor center it looks like we are you know didn't get this single block of concrete done but this is the parking lot very nice little parking lot here all concrete uh you know a place to put your horses a little sign saying that it's when it was built but this is the Hollow, Hollow Mountain National Park Visitor Center. And I will do a little run around of the outside of the building here. Because I really do like the design techniques I use. This was all built on stream. It was a very fun build. A very nice design. There are some things I do differently if I could do it again. And we may end up remodeling this at one point. I do not like particularly the roof as much as I wanted to. But I do think it's a lot of good detail work in here. So... 
you walk in and this is the whole little area a lot of open roofs and everything a lot of lanterns hanging down and to our right we have the information booth now this is a little place where the park rangers will sit and they'll tell you about the park and everything this is just free maps there are not actually free maps in there it is an illusion but then to your left you have the hollow mountain like little information walkway so we'll read through some of these did you know that the allium flower is the park's national flower the allium flower only grows above y level 100 in the park the park gets its name due to the fact that the mountain is indeed hollow there is a there is currently an effort being made to fill the underside of the mountain but this is a slow and tedious process even once done though the park will keep its name due to the cave system that will be under the park and diver's ledge is a hot spot for teens and thrill seekers the ledge drops 32 blocks down to a lake so be extra careful so far there have been no deaths in the park just a little information booth all that stuff is true that's being posted in there and here we have a little diorama of the park so here's the lodge and then here is the mountain you have the little overpass here you have the little lake this is the lake and the and the thing to jump off of Ooh, and then we have the actual map of the park itself which is very nice and we'll get to what this is very shortly we'll walk the path up to it but here is the hollow mountain history and i will read this to you guys right here right now so the hollow mountain is a man-made mountain that was created in version 1.16.5 the mountain stands at 129 blocks tall and at, at its peak and cover covers several which i spelled that wrong chunks with its width the hollow mountain gets its name for the fact that it is indeed hollow on the inside the project was originally started to see if a mountain could be realistically created in survival and as a need to get rid of cobblestone shortly after construction finished the area was made a national park again in version 1.16.5 after becoming a national park trails were designed and built along the mountain along these trails are fun factoids and places to rest on the northern face of the mountain there are campgrounds for anyone wanting to spend the night some of the more notable features of the mountain are the allium flowers that only grow above y level 100 as of the time of writing this book the only building within the park is the visitor center but there are plans for lodges uh, hint hint and more fun in the park in the more fun in the future the park is a great place to relax and unwind or go for a nice hike thank you for reading the history of the hollow mountain national park so that's a little history for you history lesson for you so before we go to the gift shop which is right here in the middle we're gonna go upstairs right here to the first upstairs area which this is the cafe so we have a juice bar right here serving carrot watermelon and apple juice little cash register as well uh, a bunch of little tables to sit around and then finally a little coffee area you got a cake an espresso maker you know another cash register to spend your money at this is the first upstairs area and then going over this way covering the bottom we have a little kids play area so i thought this would be fun like some monkey bars and some like very light parkour you know a little fun area for kids and this also gets our goal of using glazed terracotta in a build so that is off our list of things we need to do in this hardcore world now going up to the second area this is supposed to be like a little museum but there's not much in it yet because the mountain needs more history and lore so we have the park's flower the allium um the lake plants that are in the lake kelp and seagrass and then a little like campsite area nothing too special but let's jump right into the gift shop and then upwards towards the top of the hollow mountain so this is the gift shop uh we named all these things too so these are souvenir mugs these are walking sticks not all of them are named i think there's more souvenir mugs over here some saddles if we're gonna take a horse up you have hoodies shirts uh a hat hiking boots um they just pants i guess um over here compasses more pants and then some uh annual park passes that you can buy to enter the park because this is how you enter the park you pay your little thing right here and then you head up and you know what? we could head up in the night we could head up may just make sure to stay um what's the word well fed and well protected so let's start hiking up this path oh my god dangers already dangers already to the top and i'll take this hike along with you guys because we've been doing a lot of work i've been streaming every day 
from 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10.30, more like it, to 1 o'clock and, or 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., sorry. And we have done doing that every day, every single day of the week, as much as we can, unless things come up, but we've been putting a lot of work into this uh, whole world because of that. And a lot of stuff is being shown not on camera just because we've been having to do so much on camera for everyone. Now see, we're F3, Y level is 99, and then 100. So you can only uh, grow, oh, because of the, the dirt, this is the real thing. They only grow above Y level 100. We put all of these into it. I think it really makes the park. It really looks good. I love all the alliums. It was a lot to collect, but I do love all of them. So then heading our way up here, we have the Hollow Mountain Lodge. Oh my God, where did I, where? Oh my God, dude. I didn't even see him. He was hidden. So this is the Hollow Mountain Lodge and it is absolutely beautiful. I love this build with all my heart. We're not gonna do an outside tour because there's nothing too much to see. Maybe we'll take a little look on this side if there's no creepers. There it is, yeah, but we're already getting bombarded with both skeletons and creepers. So let's head in. This is a little deck out here and this is the lodge. So this is a moose head right in the front, right mounted on the working fireplace. So this is a real fireplace. That's real fire. The netherrack underneath. Not burning down the whole place. It's very hard to build one of these. It's very tricky. But we got it. And we did it really good. And this is a moose. This is my best attempt at it. We used armor stands and a lot of levers and fishing rods to position them correctly with fence gates. And I think it looks pretty good. Like, I think it looks like a moose. I think if you squint, you know, if you squint, it looks like a moose. So, coming in, you have your little desk here. This is a little sign-in desk with six keys for six rooms. And then a little breakfast nook area over here because you will be staying many nights here with little barrels and everything. And then, of course, the common room with the couch. But let's start going through all of the rooms because this is where all the detail work went into. So, let's start over here. This room, I decided to put, like, a little study in with empty bookshelves. And you can't really cover up the tops of the looms when you use them for this like that. But this is it. I try to put a lot of alliums in here as well. Let's go over here to this room. The clouds do pass through here, but this will get fixed in 1.18. Oh, yeah, there's cobwebs up. Cobwebs? Cobwebs up top as well. The couch has a cushion as well as this nice little back pattern with the banners. Over here is another room. Very simple design. I try not to go too crazy with the bottom rooms, but let's enter the clouds and enter here. So these rooms are a little like a little bit bigger. They have the entryway, which is usually filled with like a hat stand, a little area for you know setting your stuff down, and then you get to the bedroom. And I've used some of the beehives. The these are the apiary. So the other room across the way has a similar setup, but it's room is a little bit different with a full wardrobe. So this is kind of for, these are all for the single people um, staying by themselves where the upstairs are the double rooms. So we'll go up here on this side first. So up here, we have a little study area, uh, a lot of paintings put around. I really loved using this for the roof. The roof was a very fun thing to do, especially using this like blue palette. And I've wanted to do something like that for so long and we finally have done it. And this is a working clock. Uh, we'll stay at the night at one of these beds and you'll see that uh, this is a um, detector on a clock that rings the bell every time there is a block update from the daylight sensor. So there is that. Now we get into the double rooms. This is a pretty standard double room. You walk in, it has a actually three door wardrobe, which I think is really cool. And then you get these little balcony areas right out here. You can sit and enjoy some tea and watch the fire and look at the moose. And that is really it for this top half. Let's qu really quickly jump down to this over here on this side this side has some other cool little things on the top it has another little table but it also has a pool table and we use these with carpets and signs and i think it's really cool that like the signs look like pool sticks but there's no way to get pool balls yet and then finally we have the most interesting room this is the art room so this room is a special room it's just filled with all these beautiful paintings of all different sizes and shapes and this is like my favorite room to stay at when i'm here 
has a little area over here, a little study. You could sit, do your, you know, work on a book, write a book, and look down at the whole area. So we'll spend the night here. And there is the bell telling us it is morning. Like I said, that's a real working clock. And it doesn't, it should ring every hour because of the first initial block updates, but then calm down. But that is it for the Hollow Mountain National Park Lodge. I'll give an overhead view like this and we'll jump right into what we're gonna do next. This is the outside. Very, very nice. I love the whole roof texture. It's got a little snow on it because it's been rainy here or there. Here's the chimney on the back. Again, another beautiful texture. And yeah, we're gonna jump right, no cuts or anything, into what our next thing we've been working on is, is right here. So this is just conceptual now. Uh, it's not actually a build, but this will be one of the episodes, future upcoming, is going to be working on the race track for the horses. I've been wanting to do this for a while, and this is the perfect area to do it. So walking along here, we have our racetrack uh, path set out. So what I want to do is have this be like a farm area, and I have these marked on signs. A little barn area that turns into this nature area over here along the path the the horse racing track and then when you get to about here i want this whole area to be like a victorian era city like very old very you know victorian era like you know colonial even maybe even like sooner like like those style houses through this whole area there's gonna be a shortcut right here through it and this shortcut is going to be probably for a jump height or whatever. So if a horse can jump high enough, it can make this shortcut. And then if you continue along this path, I want this to be a cemetery, little like spooky area. So coming through here, we do we have a mob spawner right here. And I want to use advantage of this skeleton spawner and make like a little like spooky graveyard area right outside the village that you have to like race your horse through. And maybe there'll be skeletons, you know along the way watching you maybe they'll fire a couple arrows too but then finally you get over to here which this will be like a mountain pass and along this mountain pass it'll come right through here and back to the start so that's really what i want to do with uh the horse race track and we'll be working on that very soon um probably in the next couple of videos uh expect that so there's not much to us to update, but I'll cover it really quickly. So the next thing is the swamp biome. So we are working on terraforming the whole swamp biome. And right now we're working on removing all the sand from the ground and replacing it with dirt. So we can then bone meal it all and make the whole swamp biome into what it should be over there. And we're working every day on stream on this, and this is coming very along very nicely. As you can see, I'll do a little flyover. We're playing and doing this whole area. So that should be done by the next video, hopefully. Our next project has been the train station. So this is the end train station. This is the spawn area. And I built this here in case we ever forget our bed or don't have the placement. We can have a nice mine cart ride back all the way through. It's a nice build. It's used end stone, so that crossed that off the list. But this is the end city railway. And I want to put more of these around the world too. So we can have like little inter interconnections. But it's a very fun build. It still needs some work with some detailing. I will go a little bit far so you guys can see the uh support beams because there's support beams along this whole thing you definitely see this in the background here or there before a video but there are the support beams right here and yeah and now we will jump into the next project which is the quartz forest so we've done a little bit of work here um in the meantime a lot of our time has been spent over terraforming the swamp biome but we are also not forgetting about putting trees into the quartz forest and we're getting close to being done we've almost got the entire area over there all uh, hoed out for the mycelium to take over and we're just working on getting all the trees throughout this whole place um the bit the great tree is still doing really good as well and that is really about it for this we still need to put some end rods on but it's come along very nicely i'm sure one of these days it will be finished before we know it okay and on to the next one which is this area now this area last time we left it was not all put together but we've worked a lot on getting all the um little lamp lamp posts put in and connecting the bridge with this side as well as flushing in 
some of the areas over there and getting everything ready for um, putting in the rest of the elevator and the 1.18 update because we're waiting on a lot of things with the 1.18 update to really work on this. The redstone elevator is still working perfectly fine, so let's take it down to find the next project. That is the underground mines. We have finally done this whole area up. We do plan on putting copper in here eventually uh, as accent blocks, but it just doesn't exist yet. So if you come down here, we have it all the way to here and all the way down here. We have also redone the entire smelter. So the auto smelter is redone and we got a little view vantage point into it now. We did up the entire insides with um, nice blocks to make it look nice, even though there is some cobblestone left. And we extended the tracks outwards so there's no more glitching. There's no more rubbing up against each other to cause it to malfunction. And we have now droppers and hoppers that process everything and take it up for us rather than another mine car that does that for us. So this is the new and improved auto smelter, which again is a, another very fun thing added to this world. And for our final project, this is the nether hub. And we've been working relentlessly on this because of the amount of crying obsidian we need. And we have finally finished. We have finally got all the crying obsidian we needed. Look at how beautiful that is. The design is done. We only have to add in the other two like hanging icicles on the other side of the ceiling. And we are done with this build. This build will be finito, finished. So there is that. And to get that crying obsidian, we get to trade so much with this guy. This guy has been our main guy and supplied all the crying obsidian for this area in exchange for some gold. And we have used, I don't even know how many stacks of gold we have used on this guy to give us the right materials. Please, Enderman, move. But let's see, does, are you going to give me it first try? For the audience, you're on camera. No. No, he does not. He is, he is very stubborn. I have many, many blocks of, of useless things due to trading with him so many times. And before we end this video, I want to do a little bit of an update on the to-do board. We have a lot more things um, put on here, which may come this update, may come the next one. We do not know, but I will go through them all for you. And a lot of them will probably be videos. So expect videos in the future of fixing the museum dome, building the observatory, the horse race tracks of obstacles course that I talked about earlier. Fix the redstone piano in... Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Fix the redstone piano in the vineyard. Map the stars. Build an auto sorter. Finish the quartz forest. Map the map room. Start construction on the zoo. And make a shooting range. And with mentioning the vineyard, I almost forgot this. We'll just run right over here from here. We have added in uh, berry bushes and vines to the whole area to make it really look like a vineyard. To really up the quality of the whole area. And the next update when we get moss blocks, we'll be putting moss blocks in. But, you know, one of our oldest standing buildings is this vineyard. And I think it may be time for a remodel coming up pretty soon of this build because it is one of our older buildings if you look around the area that hasn't been touched or done anything with in a very long time so maybe expect that from a future video so i'd like to thank you all so much for watching this episode of through the ages um your support really helps me with this channel and the motivation to keep making content for you please remember to if you like what i do leave a like hit subscribe um, hit the notification bell in the top right corner to be informed on when I upload because through the age of videos do not get uploaded that often, which I want to change as well. I want to change that as well. But yes, I just want to thank you guys all so much. We recently hit 100 subscribers and we had a whole special for that. So you guys know how thankful I am for your support. But expect the next video to be more of a building rather than an update video. And yeah, I will see you guys all on the next one. Peace out, gamers.